So as I often say to all of my students, you will have an epiphany moment. The stages of learning, I would suggest, just in case those of you that are having lessons questioning yourself, is first of all, understanding. So when you're having lessons, you are trying to pay money to receive a better understanding very much of the golf swing. Once you understand things, the second stage of learning is going to be the visual, okay? So lots of golfers will have the wrong idea, the misconception about a certain position in golf. The pro will surprise you with the correct move and then you'll video it and you'll go, oh my God, that actually looks very much correct. The third one would be the feeling aspect of the golf swing. Okay, so once it starts to kind of feel correct and we get that recognition of the same positions each and every time, that would be a really good thing. That's when you're kind of ready to take that next level of your golf swing onto actually the golf course. And then the last one would then kind of be the results. And that's kind of the story that I tend to suggest to all my students in terms of the order of how things are generally going to work. Now, those four things can happen very, very quickly. And for other people, they happen a little bit slower for reasons that I can't necessarily explain. But the point is, I want to talk about an epiphany moment that I had, personally speaking, which was very much a level of understanding and, and feeling when I was a amateur that kind of took me to that level of being a very, very good amateur slash professional golfer. And it was very much the awareness of what my lead arm was doing in particular with my chest in the backswing. Now, before we get into that, the big problem with amateur golfers in terms of the reason that keeps you in that amateur category is really distance. Okay, so if you could hit the golf ball theoretically further, you would become a better golfer. Now, there'll be some of you that may argue with that, but generally speaking, that's the way we can kind of group categories of golfers together is based upon distance. That means you're swinging too slow and that means your tempo is too slow. So during this video, I'm going to play a simple tempo trainer and what it should showcase if, if you were to practice this is how much you'll notice the way that a professional golfer has got themselves set up to the ball, completed the entire swing by the time that most amateur golfers are still very much in the backswing. And that's why during this video you'll understand the relationship of the lead arm to the chest and how powerful that movement can become for your golf swing. So if I hit a couple of shots here, like so, so I get a setup and it's like so, right? So I'm going to hit two more. I'm going to get myself set up again, nice and quickly, like that. Okay, one more. Okay, so the feeling that I have is very much a couple of things. The first one is my lead arm moving up across my chest, like so. So you can see the way the rope trainer just hits me in the back, boom, like this. Then what I do is I turn my chest okay, like so, towards the target to guide my lead arm off, like this. So you can see the way the rope trainer is still in contact with my back as I'm doing it. Then, once I've got that feeling, I just continue to turn and I let my lead arm propel off my chest. And then you can start to notice the way you can end up with what will feel like a very short action, but generate a tremendous amount of force. Now compare that to somebody who has the wrong idea about the golf swing. They kind of, for example, they think, oh, I'm supposed to turn as much as I can. Do you see what I mean? It's so slow, and then it's slowing down even more. And that's why you'll notice the way the pros are already finished by the time you've kind of almost got towards the top of your backswing position. So that's why a rope trainer is a really good exercise because it will give you that feeling of how to generate effortless speed. And the nice thing about training with a rope is, well, you can't rush a rope. So although it might feel quite quick in terms of your tempo, it's still very much in sequence and that's the key thing. So you wanna make sure you're doing a couple of things. The first one is get a little bit quicker. Spend some of your time practicing improving that tempo to be a little bit more quick because that's gonna help you generate more speed. But obviously what you also wanna be doing is still generating force. So you don't wanna just go, like this and do nothing right so the first thing you've got to do is you've got to go right lead arm up to my chest you've got to do that pretty quick okay that's the first thing you practice like that and then from there you can use your chest to propel your lead arm away from you and i promise you it's going to make a massive difference i do it all the time with students that i work with particularly online and you'll end up thinking your swing is shorter, more compact, more powerful, but in reality, it's just that change in narrative as opposed to big turn, big weight shift, all the rest of it. It's gonna be more snappy. It's gonna be lead onto your chest, chest to propel your arm. It's gonna make a big difference. See you soon.